bitches. That's why they sell that. But no one's really talking about the other side of the coin. You know what I mean? They're only showing you the image that they want you to see. So you just yeah, gotta remember, you know? That's why, like, when I see people posting pho- um, P&L or anything like that, you always gotta remember they can be Photoshopped. They can be, sh- you know, they're talking yeah. about they just got this car from this. Cool. But I just think you don't need to compare yourself to other people. Why do that to yourself? You know what I mean? You're smart enough. You already got this far. Just trust yourself. Don't follow those people. You know? That's, it's just not worth your energy. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, but but maybe we are making a problem. All of us that's sharing, some of us just trying to show off, and this is not a good thing. So let's go to the next uh, to the next subject. I wanted to talk about funding talents and and those problems. I guess that it has some advantages. Yeah. But also, it has. I guess it has some disadvantages for the traders or yeah. the talented tra- traders that are trading. Yeah. Because of, you know, when I hear about the services that they uh, give to them, it's yeah. more like uh, customer service, more like answering them right at the time. It's not about you know taking care of the trader, and um, that's 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 more important. Right. How how do you think this process? I mean, is it really a good thing or not? I'm not sure. I mean, if you think about it, if you're a trader who comes in and doesn't have a lot of money, the companies that will fund you if you can trade well, they can really give you a great opportunity. It sounds great. But where I struggle, and I would be supportive of it 100% because it is a great opportunity, but where I struggle with it is I haven't been able to find anybody that will show me a payout. Just show me how much money these companies are paying you so I know it's legit and you're not just wasting your time. I would never want to recommend people to waste their time. So Mm -hmm. the funded companies, I think, are just a byproduct of everything in the world right now and how so many different people have access to banks, the big banks like you were talking about before, and they can access liquidity and they can sell that liquidity. And just think about it like this. If FTMO or whoever the company is, whatever trading company, if they charge $600 for uh, the, tr- the challenge, they get to make all the rules in this game. You're playing their game. If you pass, you get the, the coveted prize of a $100,000 account. But it's a challenge, and they're going to make it hard for you. That's why they built it the way that they did with the rules that they did. So just think about these numbers. 25,000 people. That's not a lot of people, right? If you do yeah. twenty five thousand times, let's just say six hundred dollars, that's one point or excuse me, that's fifteen million dollars. So oh, think about it. They can make fifteen million dollars just off signups. They don't have to actually do anything else because they know most people will fail the challenge, most people will fail. And they'll make fifteen million dollars. So there's, there, it's a good business model if you're trying to make money. But I, I, like you said, I don't think that those companies really do care about their traders succeeding. That's not really what they're in the business of. There's way more money in them just getting people to blow it and screw it up. Look, 25,000 people is not that many if you do it for a long period yeah. of time. So, no, I think they're, they're not super... If you make money and you're a consistent trader, they're going to be like, cool, that's great. But I don't think that they're... How can I them just improve? I mean, they think that my account is so small, so what can I do? I mean, I cannot earn money. I cannot do that, do that. You know, what do you recommend to them? I always tell people to just try their best to not only create other businesses online, but find other streams of income is really just a basic way of looking at it. Because with today's day and age, like, look, we're having this call over Instagram. It's crazy the opportunity the Internet created for everyone. You can go online and sell your skills on Fiverr. You can go online and sell your skills on Facebook. You can do so many different things to offer services now if you're thinking the right way. Now, there's some people that are closed-minded and they're like not even open to the idea of starting their own business online. But if you do that, you can generate other income and take that other income and throw it into the trading account. And then when you have that freedom, think about it this way too. If FTMO, if, you make, if they give you 100 grand, and let's just say for easy numbers, you make 10% in a month. They're going to take 30% of that, so they take $3,000, you take $7,000. Not only do you have to pay taxes on the $7,000, yeah. if you have enough money in your own account where you could make, let's just say, instead of making 10%, you could make 5%, but make more than $7,000, wouldn't you just do that? Yeah, of course, because yeah. you have all the money, it's all yours, you can decide where you want to move it, leave it in, whatever. So it's really not even that much money once you start to get the ball rolling and start to grow your own account. You'll realize that they aren't really offering that much, but they offer a lot to the people that are down and don't have any money yeah. at all to start. And they only have a hundred bucks. They, it's very tempting. You know, it's a nice offer. It looks great. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's all tempting. So uh, let's get rid of that and go through more psychology problems. Uh, yeah. Don't bother you a lot. Uh, so just one more question. 
Yeah. Uh, what does it, what should a trader do after losing four, three, five times, just losing money, losing money? They say that just okay, go away, go out, don't think about trading, don't look at the charts. But it's not about looking the chart. It's the mental part. It's like something just heavy on your shoulders. You have lost money, and you know how 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 they have to just overcome this problem. I think you have to remember. So there's a book that everybody should read. I think I have it right here. Um, maybe not. It's called. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it anywhere. I don't. I don't know where it is right now. But I have it. Some. Maybe it's in here. Hold on. I gotta show you because it's small. Okay. Yeah. This book. Yeah. 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 It's called the Twelve Habitudes of Highly Successful Traders. It's very, very small, and one of the habitudes in there is the habitude of the long-term view. So whenever you take a loss, if you're trading a system, which is like repeatable entry and exit signals, then all you have to remember is that if the system is a winning system, that that loss just puts you one step closer to a win. And if you're focused on the long-term, that one loss, if it's controlled, if it's appropriately sized, if it's you know, you managed it well, that one loss will mean nothing in the bigger picture. And once you trade for, you know, a couple of months, a couple of years, you really do get to understand that, and then you realize one loss doesn't mean anything as long as I'm focused on the system. But if I get caught up in how much money I lost, or if I maybe oversized and traded too heavy, and then I get caught up on that, then it, like you said, it is very tough to overcome that. So taking a break can help. I think, like you said, walking away, getting off the chart definitely helps. But if you lose five trades in a row and they're really good trades, there's a chance the system is not profitable. I've never, when I'm trading on my system, I've never lost five trades in a row. So I think if you have a winning system, you know what I mean, like you're winning six out of ten, even five out of ten, you should not string five losses together in a row on good trades. You're probably just taking less probable trades, that's the way I like to say it. They're, they're still good setups. A lot of guys can still read good setups, but they're just lower probability. So instead of taking those trades and taking losses, don't take the trades at all and wait for better trades, and you'll end up being in a much better position, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's the hardest part of trading, just waiting and yeah. getting through the yeah. trades, yeah. So, uh, thank you very much. You said you have only 10 minutes. I don't want to bother you It's great to have you. Dude, Hope to see you again. Dude, anytime. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Oh, you know, as a live, uh, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I'm going to go to the next one.